confidence to keep going. So really glad you're here. Now comes the humility part of confidence. Nikki, would you pronounce your last name for us? And then we're going to do the one, two, three, and we're all going to pronounce it correctly. Your last name is pronounced? Kazam. One, two, three, Kazam. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Mickey is going to be giving the speech objectives for our next speaker, Bob Avalone, who is also our vice president of membership. Bob had this to say when he responded to the question about confidence. I'm constantly looking to improve my confidence as a public speaker. And Toastmasters has helped me tremendously. So, Nikki, tell us a little bit about what we can expect and what you'll be looking for in evaluating Bob's speech. Thank you, and thanks for pronouncing my last name. Um, this is the fourth speech from the Advanced Manual Speaking to Entertain. And the title of the speech is Birth of an Activist. The objective is that the speaker should not act out the incident, but rather interpret it for the audience using narration and dialogue. And in addition, uh, he will be evaluated for his verbal evaluation. I'm really looking to hear what you have to say, and thanks for asking me. Round of applause for Mickey. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bob Avalone. Thank you all. The year is 1965. Some of you may remember that year, others may be history. I was beginning my freshman year of college. I was interested in public affairs, not necessarily involved, but interested. And I was a supporter of Lyndon Johnson, and thus I was also a supporter of the Vietnam War, which was raging at that time. I decided to join College ROTC, not because I necessarily was anxious to join the Army, but I saw the draft in my future, and I wanted to be an officer rather than enlisted man. I joined the ROTC, and you, as a member of the ROTC, you have to wear a uniform one day a week to college. And since I was a commuter, I could really go home and change. I worked the whole day. One day, one of the anti-war activists comes up to me and says, I couldn't help but notice in your uniform. Would you like to read this literature of ours? I said, no thanks. Although I wish, now going looking back, I wish I had been more polite and taken it. Time marches on and it's now the end of my sophomore year. The way ROTC works, after two years, you have to be accepted in the program and then you're committed to serving a term as an officer in the Army. And you have to take a physical, just like for the draft. And I, and I did that and, and I fought. I failed the physical. I had a uh, condition called nystigmus, which I didn't know about until then, which makes it difficult to shoot a rifle among other things. So they rejected me and I was now free of the obligation of worry of being, being drafted. During that summer between my sophomore and junior year, it was a very tra tranquil time for me because I was now able to look back objectively at the war and I studied it a lot more. And basically I switched sides. I decided that the war was a big mistake and we should get out of it as soon as possible. I came back to my junior year of college wanting to do something about it, but I wasn't comfortable as a radical. I wasn't really a radical. I still believed in the system. I didn't want to join. You may remember SDS, Students of Democratic Society, which was a radical group, despite their name. But then came along Gene McCarthy to challenge Sherwin and Johnson. And I said, I gotta, I gotta help him, I gotta do something. So I took the TO to the McCarthy headquarters in Boston. I was really nervous. I walked around the building a couple of times just to get the nerve to walk in the building. You may not believe this looking at me today, but I was a very shy person at that time. But I, 
time ago, and I talked to the uh, probably the volunteer coordinator and said, I'd like to help the campaign. And he said, we'd like you to go door to door talking to people, and, you know, convince and find out how they feel. I said to him, I don't think I'd be very good at that. And he came back and said, maybe you'd be better than you think you'd be. I ended up doing that, and I turned out to be okay. I did, I did okay, but I, I, when I lived in Medford, I went to a door and came to voters. How, how many people have ever done this, either for candidate or for cause? No, quite a few. So for those of you who haven't, or the others, I'd like to give you some of the typical responses and how I would reply to those responses. The one response is really apathy. People would say, you know, I haven't thought about the race much, or I've thought about it, but I haven't decided yet, and I'd say something like, that's fine, sir. Would you like to, you have any questions about our candidate? You say, no, I don't. Would you like to view some of our literature? Sure, I'll take your literature. Then you'd get occasionally, not a lot of times, fairly rude response. People would say, I'm not interested, don't bother me. Leave me alone. They might slam the door in your face, or if they don't, I'd say something like, sorry to bother you, and you knock them down, it's called fuse. Then you have, you know, you get a lot, you get cost response. I really like your candidate. That is great, sir. Thank you very much. Would you like to help the campaign? Would you like to volunteer? I'm sorry, I don't have enough time for that. That's fine. You knock them down, it's called one or two, you know, strongly to lean towards your candidate. And then there were the honors, which I would actually prefer this to the people who were rude. I don't like your candidate, I like the other guy, or I haven't really decided one way or the other. That's all right, I appreciate you being honest, thanks for the time. So the, the ones and twos, the positives, we get a follow-up. Near the election, we're not going to vote for your guy. The uh, undecided will probably get a follow-up visit by another volunteer later. The fours and fives, you knock them down, don't they will get a new visit. So to finish up my story, you probably know either if you live through it or read the history of what happened that year. McCarthy kind of did well against Johnson and he forced him out of the race. Robert Kennedy decided to run and he's assassinated. <coughs> Humphrey gets in and he beats McCarthy for the nomination. But Nixon is elected and the war continues for quite some time. Our Ron book, book on the political process. I almost every two years I'm involved with some kind of love. Democracy is not a spectator sport. That is something that I'm going to uh, say to you. Democracy is not a spectator sport. So I all urge you all to get involved in some way, whether you agree with me or have, uh, have a different opinion. Get involved politics beyond just voting. Mr. Joseph. Thank you, Bob Avalone. Even a shy person can become confident. All of us have the capability